Hey everybody, welcome to Eagles Game Plan presented by Toyota. We are finally back. It is a game week. You've got Ike Reese, Mike Quick, Eagles greats with us. And guys, the birds, they're good at first impressions. They're nine and two in their last 11 season openers. Most wins over that span in the NFL in week one. Let's get an idea of the new additions on this team. Who has impressed you guys the most? I'm gonna start with you, the receiver, Mike Quick. Well, and I guess you guys expect me to go receiver, so I don't want to disappoint you. I'm going to go A.J. Brown. I think that this guy has such a resume. Two of the of his first three seasons, he went for over 1,000 yards receiving two of those seasons. This is going to be fun to watch. A.J. Brown's my guy. Hi. A.J. Brown definitely going to make it a lot easier for those other weapons on the offensive side to thrive. Just like Hassan Reddick, the big key acquisition this offseason on the defensive side of the football. We all know you got to be able to affect the quarterback in order to have a great defense. Hassan Reddick coming off his last two seasons of double digit sacks, 11 and then 12 and a half down there with Carolina. I think he's, he's in the prime of his career right now. He's in a great defense with great talent surrounding him. It's going to allow him to thrive. And I love the fact that he refers to himself as a weapon. That means he can be used all over the place. Happy to have a guy like Hassan Reddick in his defense. The last time we had a guy who referred to himself as a weapon in his defense. I don't want to go there. I'm just saying, you all know who I'm talking about. But, but Ike's claiming him as a linebacker now, right? <laughs> That's he's right. a weapon, but he's a linebacker. How about Jalen Hurts? The only time we saw him in the preseason, six for six, 80 yards, touchdown. And who's going to break down that touchdown on that drive? How about Shane Steichen, the Eagles offensive coordinator? Here's tape stuff with her own Fran Duffy, presented by Chickies and Pete's. Well, joining us this week here on Tape Study, presented by Chickies and Pete's, Eagles offensive coordinator Shane Steichen. Coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, well, let's get through uh, this preseason play, opening drive of the summer, touchdown, Jalen Hurts to Dallas Goddard. Obviously, Dallas is going to get the ball on this sale route, but yeah. I love what A.J. Brown does on this play to really try to attract attention. Take us through what A.J.'s role is on this concept. So A.J. right here, he's basically running a post right here, and so he's taking this corner out of here on this one. All right, Dallas is running the sale route like you just said. All right, and then we got Quez coming on a shallow, and then we got Rager back here coming on in, and then we're putting Miles here into the flat. And basically what we're trying to do, this, this flat defender right here, all we're doing is just running the high-low off him. They're in a three deep, four under coverage. All right, so if you let it play right here, we're short motion and down, AJ on this one. All right, he's running the post. And then right now you can just see right here, all we're doing is having eyes right here on this free safety. And you can see we got natural leverage right here with Dallas on this Sam linebacker right here. So we, all we're doing is looking at this safety. If he gets depth right here, we got Miles in the flat and then he's got to rally and make a tackle. If he jumps the flat right here, we got Dallas right here because we're clearing this post out right here by AJ to throw this. And if all that gets cloudy right here, here comes Quez on a shallow replacing this Sam linebacker in that dead spot right there. So it's a lot for Jalen to be able to comprehend fast, kind of reading that one defender and just reading his depth. Yep, that's exactly right. So even right here for some reason, right, if this guy does a heck of a job playing two, right, kind of taking that away, I'm not really sure if he's taking that away or jumping the flat to rally. Here comes Quez because this Sam linebacker is getting depth and that ball could go to Quez right there on the shallow cross right there getting a big game but really good job right here by Jalen recognizing the coverage three deep four under really good job by AJ right here taking the corner right here so it gives just enough room right there and what a perfect throw right here by Jalen this ball is thrown firm with an arc right there where it needs to be and then Dallas is big as strong and he is to break that tackle and then jump over two dice uh, for the touchdown was huge right there. Yeah, if Jalen leads this out, this is an area to be picked off by the underneath defender. That's exactly right. So you can see the ball placement right on his back shoulder right there, right? Protects him from the defender right there. That way he can take the hit right there, and then he bounces off the hit and makes a heck of a play getting in the end zone. Beautiful. And earlier in the drive, Jalen had hit Miles in that underneath. So he's just showing that ability to go through, make similar reads, and just kind of read what the defense is doing. 100%, right? Take what the defense gives you. Try not to force things, right? If you got it, take it. If not, right, take the easy completion and move on. All right, let's get into the run game here next week against Cleveland, Coach. First play of the game to come out. Uh, you can't ask for better execution than you get on this run play. Yeah, absolutely. So right here, this is just a pin and pull scheme right here. All right, if you let it play a little bit right here, we'll just start with Cam Jurgens right here getting out in front. So he's pulling around. We're going to kick out the first thing outside, and then he's leading up through there on this one. So if you let it go right there, you can see uh, Sua coming through, kicking out right there. And then we're all the way up on the safety right there. But you can also see right here that's a huge block by 51 all right good job hitting it right they made a nice hole right there 
so he's got good vision, but really good job right here by Driscoll, Rich Rod, and Jack Stoll to create that wall right there. You can see that huge wall, and then you get the two kickout blocks, one by Sua, and then you get the lead up right there by Cam, and then a heck of a job by Boston seeing the hole and hitting it. And that's the thing is you, you called it that pin pull sweep. This is such a beautiful visual of the pin element with the pull element just creating that seal. Absolutely. I mean, you can see the athleticism right there by 51. I mean, just the way he gets out in space right there and to get to that second level, all right, and then get the pancake right there on the safety, right? Those are the plays we want, that toughness, that grittiness right there by 51. Eagles game plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers. Proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi. PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. That's it, Jay. You can throw that square just like that. That's great, man. Shoulder, hip, shoulder, hip, shoulder, hip. Here it is. Find the over and then reset back. There it is. Good. Boom. Find it. There it is. Right? Visualize that defense. It's like pitch and catch, man. We call those quick games from 90% completions. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's not a huge game, because you're going to throw something that's going to break, that's going to even it out, you know? Hey, welcome back. That was Eagles coach Brian Johnson. And one of the big points he was making with Jalen Hurts there is going through your progressions, going through your reads quickly. And then if something isn't there, dump it off, get the ball out. Have yeah. you seen Jalen improve with that, getting it out quick? I just think that it's a natural progression. This is the second year he's been in this system. And it's been a long time since he's been in the same system, two years in a row. And you're seeing that growth. If you watch this play, when he goes to the line of scrimmage, he sees off coverage on the outside. The slot to the left side, you've got off coverage as well. But he's looking to go to the receiver on the right side. And if I'm that receiver, I'm thinking off coverage, the ball is coming to me. When the ball is snapped, you see the pieces start to move on the board. That outside linebacker, he's going to buzz underneath that stop route on the outside, and he takes that away. The seam route down the middle, that's taken away as well. So what does Jalen do right away? Doesn't hesitate. He drops it down to his check down. You have to go where the defense is not. That's where they're not in that flat area. He drops the ball down and you see a big play, a first down play, because he's so quick to get the football out. They don't have time to react up and make a play on the ball. I see the progression. I see the growth in Jalen Hurts. And I think we're all going to see that as time progresses. Well, speaking of playing fast, you've got a guy that's going to be coming at you fast, Aiden Hutchinson, the number two overall pick with the Lions, Michigan man. And that is the subject of our enemy intel with Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelry. The Eagles offense, led by Jalen Hurts, will face a Lions defense that will look a lot different than it did a year ago. Obviously, many remember that the Eagles beat the Lions pretty badly last year. That was Aaron Glenn's first season as defensive coordinator under Dan Campbell. Now you have to remember where Aaron Glenn came from. He spent the previous five years with Sean Payton and Dennis Allen with the Saints. So we know that Aaron Glenn wants to be aggressive. He had so many injuries on the back end a year ago that he really couldn't play the way he wanted to. So we expect to see a couple of things from the Lions defense under Aaron Glenn. Number one, you're going to see a lot of different front looks. And then you're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Now that they feel better about their secondary, that's one thing to really look for in this game. We know that they drafted Aiden Hutchinson with the second pick in the draft. And Hutchinson is a really good prospect. And what stood out in the preseason is they used him in multiple ways. Obviously, at his core, he's a defensive end. And one of the things he does exceptionally well is short area quickness off the ball. He can beat offensive tackles right off the snap, as you see him do here in his first preseason game. Tremendous lateral quickness off the ball can make offensive tackles look bad right away. That's a strength of Hutchinson's game. But as I mentioned about the different front looks that Aaron Glenn likes to show, particularly in their sub fronts, whether they go with five DBs or six DBs, 
One thing we saw in the preseason, and actually we saw some of this at Michigan as well, was Hutchinson move inside and play defensive tackle. Because they have a pretty good pass rusher on the edge. Charles Harris, who was a first round pick a number of years ago, finally put it together last year for the Lions as an edge rusher, and he had a quality season. So one thing you will see for sure in their sub fronts is Hutchinson inside working against guards while Harris works outside attacking offensive tackles. And they got a sack that way in the final preseason game against the Steelers. So this is not going to be as easy as it might seem. This is a different looking defense. They will be aggressive. They will attack. They will not sit back in this matchup against the Eagles. All right, that's a fun look at the new safety, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, or C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And you see the versatility that he's bringing in that second level, the secondary of the Eagles defense. What do you like about C.J.? Well, the same thing that Jonathan Gannon raved about him, his multidimensional ability to play in the defense. Yep. You know, they use a term in basketball called positionless basketball players, right? That's what they're using now in basketball, thanks to LeBron James. But, <laughs> you know, there. they're also having that on the defensive side of the ball. I yeah. talked about that earlier with Son Reddick being labeled a weapon. Well, Chelsea Gardner Johnson can also be labeled one of those versatile players. Yeah. Plays a little bit of slot, also plays safety. They're going to use him all over the place. Let's watch him here versus Tampa, and you can see the versatility that he shows. You got a quarter defense here. He's out here lined up on number two. So the thing that I love that he does here at the snap of the ball, now, that's Hall, future Hall of Famer Antonio Brown potentially right there. So he wants to make sure he gets Tom Brady off of that initial read. Does a nice job of making sure he at least tries to reroute Antonio Brown. Keeps his shoulders square. Gets to the outside. And when this ball is thrown out here to Ronald Jones, a big running back, this is the thing I love about Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. He has a fearless mentality. The way he closes in on the ball carrier, able to make this tackle one-on-one -on -one with Ronald Jones. Those are the types of plays that we're gonna love watching CJ make in this defense. He plays with toughness, he plays with tenacity, plays with the type of personality that I think we're gonna enjoy having on that side of the football. I mean, I'm excited about watching Chauncey Gardner Johnson play. So that last point you made, that's what I like most about him. I like the fire that he brings to the game. He plays fearless football. When he's down in the box, he will attack you like a linebacker. He plays like he's the biggest guy <laughs> on the field. That's the way he plays. That's what I love about him. The fire that he's going to bring to this defense. One guy that the Eagles have the key on with the Lions is receiver Amonra St. Brown. So let's have a little more enemy intel with Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. The Eagles defense will play against a Lions offense that I believe will be pretty defined and really showed that toward the latter part of last season when Ben Johnson, who was on the staff, took over the play calling duties. And you started to see a number of things within the context of that offense, things that really played to the strength of Jared Goff as a quarterback. Remember, Goff started his career with the Rams, and he was in a Super Bowl, and he was a play-action quarterback, and he was very, very efficient at it. So you started to see more of that later in the season with the Lions a year ago. Another thing you started to see more of was shifting and motion. And I want to speak to a specific play that really talks about the things that the Eagles will see from this Lions offense, particularly in the passing game. Now notice they have two backs. This is the straight eye formation with Goff under center. And the receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, he will shift across the formation and he will basically hide behind the offensive line and the tight end. And this is really important because it allows him to get a cleaner release into a route because corners cannot press St. Brown where he is lined up. And what you're going to get here is ISO lead run action. Now, this is going to be a basic route concept that's in every team's playbook. It's what we call a post-cross combination. 
and St. Brown's going to run the crossing route. And the play action is really critical because the ISO lead run action holds the underneath coverage. They attack their first responsibility, which is the running game, and that creates space for St. Brown. And the other thing it does, and this speaks now to the strength of Jared Goff, it defines the read and the throw. Goff knows where he's going with the ball. He gets his head around, and he delivers a strike to St. Brown, who has room to run. It turns out to be a 30-yard gain. This kind of concept plays to the strength of the offense, the strength of the quarterback. And once Ben Johnson took over the play calling responsibilities a year ago, you started to see more of this. And in fact, over the last part of the season, when Jared Goff was in the lineup, this passing game was a lot more efficient. So this is not necessarily an easy tactical matchup for the Eagles. All right, Greg's talking about that Lions passing game. We see that, but we all watch Hard Knocks, and Deuce Staley is a big influence on that offense. They want to run the football and be physical, right, Ike? Yeah, when you got a head coach like Dan Campbell who wants to bite off kneecaps, and we know Deuce <laughs> Staley is the assistant head coach there, those personalities are going to permeate through that running back room. And they, yes, they, their mentality is we want to be a physical football team. That starts with trying to have an identity as a run-first oriented team, and that's what they're going to do with these two dynamic backs. DeAndre Swift is more of a home run hitter, yeah. although they will give him the ball to run on the outside. But when they want to get tough yards, they're going to go with Jamal Williams. I think he's the more physical of the two, has the ability to get those tough yards. And the Lions, they want to run early on downs so they can set up their play action pass. They've invested in the passing game on the outside with these receivers that can stretch the field. So they want to go play action on second and short or third down situations. When it's third and long, there is no play action pass. And that's why the Eagles have to take care of business on first and second down with this Lion run game. The Eagles front seven is going to be happy hat on a hat, man versus man, with this Lions team, and it's going to be a battle of wills. And I like our chances here. Hey, welcome back to Eagles Game Plan, and it is a season opener. Second one for Nick Sirianni. They went down to Atlanta last year and whooped up on the Falcons. Hopefully it happens again. Guys, take me back. I know for some it's going to be a little longer than others, but your favorite season <laughs> opener. Well, no. I'll give Mike time to think about his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so my favorite season opener, I got to go back to 2000, the pickle juice game, right? Oh, yeah. So it was the first year that we wouldn't make the playoffs under Coach Reed, and I still believe that game set the tone for our season that year, made us believe in ourselves. I didn't necessarily agree with the idea of running a surprise onside kick, but I quickly found out I was the minority in the group <laughs> that did not agree with it. And Coach Reed had full confidence in running that, and we executed it. And I think it got our season off to a great start. Deuce rushed for over like 200 oh, yards that day. And uh, we went on to go 11 and five and make the playoffs. And that was the first year, I mean, second year under Coach Reed, but that, that opener is the one that always sticks out. I'm glad you mentioned that one because that was a great game. And I remember sitting in the booth watching Deuce going up and down the field. But for me, it had to be the 04 season because there was so much anticipation. Terrell Owens comes to town. And I remember going up to Lehigh and there's so many people flocking up to Lehigh that you couldn't even get there because everybody wanted to see T.O. and what he would bring to this offense. But what did he do? He didn't disappoint. The very first game against the Giants, T.O. just went completely off. He had three touchdowns, and everybody then thought that this was the team to be. But that one, that opener, just sticks out in my mind. All right, and just a disclaimer, let's remind everybody, this is probably not the same Lions team that we saw last year, because they were 0-8 after the Eagles whooped up on them. Dan Campbell got out the shovels, buried that tape. They went 3-5, 3-5-1 and five, three, five yeah. and one the rest of the way. So they did. it's going to be a little tougher than it was last year, I think. Thanks for watching Eagles Game Plan, presented by Toyota. The season opener is finally here. Eagles Game Plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles, Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy, Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi, PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why.